Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as most of you may already know, I am SGR's Vice Chair and I'm also Education Director. And what I'm going to talk to you about just for a few minutes here is some of the education projects that we've been involved with. And this is how I think action um, follows research in that a lot of the actions that we do in our education piece are based on robust research. Um, next slide. Emily's in charge, thank you, Emily. Um, so the current projects that we are doing within Scientific Global Responsibility in terms of education, um, uh, Science for Society Week and One Planet, One Life workshops. So I'm gonna explain each of those in turn. So Science for Society Week is a website that was set up in 2015. Um, it is a collection, it's a repository of a lot of science education activities, and these focus on um, SGR's main aims of um, contributing to science and technology, um, peace, social justice, environmental sustainability. It was originally set up to provide an alternative to activities funded by the arms and fossil fuel industry. So this echoes what Liz was talking about earlier, that um, a lot of the activities, um, educational activities, are funded by some of those organisations. So Science for Society Week, uh, the website includes lots of teaching resources and back in the days when we could, um, it included lots of trips and tours to um, inspirational projects. We've, had, we've run an annual competition um, and we've worked in collaboration with schools and other organisations. Um, some of the resources that we've got, you may um, be familiar with trump cards. Um, we set up a set of trunk cards, we devise these, um, and there's nearly 50 cards in the pack. And it includes data on um, the nutritional information of food. So it goes from apples to bananas to oats. Um, as you can see from the slide here, it also includes the water footprint of food and the carbon footprint of food. So um, you, can, you can play the game by comparing these uh, numbers um, for different foods. Um, we've also got other resources um, on the website, but in terms of our One Planet, One Life workshops, we've been running these for the last couple of years with some funding from uh, the Warney Extension Fund. And in terms of how we evaluate the learning, um, what we've got on the slide here is a, a picture of the pre and post sticky dots exercise, where there are four questions asked of all the uh, students who participate in this. Um, the questions are, I know what causes climate change, I know what a carbon footprint is, I know how to calculate my carbon footprint, and I know what I could do to reduce my carbon footprint. And what's interesting is the, um, the start of this, the workshop, the students put a sticky dot, and on this illustration here, we've got almost all of them in the not at all column. And at the end of the day, they do the blue dots, and almost all of those are in the completely column. So not only do they find out things, but they also um, make pledges and commitments to what they will do to reduce their carbon footprint. And this clearly shows the learning that's happened during the day. So, so far, uh, we've run 35 workshops. We're coming to the end of the project now, and we anticipate that by the end of the project, we will have run um, at least 40 workshops and reached at least um, 1,250 students, which is um, well past the figures that we were targeted with for the funding. So planned projects, things that we've got coming up, Science for Society Week next year, and globally responsible careers in STEM. So I'll just say a few words about each of these. Next slide. So Science for Society Week next year. Um, We've been inspired by the fact that there's a lot more information online than there used to be. And we are planning to run um, a themed week of activities based around climate change and buildings and energy, climate change, food and nutrition, climate change, consumption and waste, climate change, science and peace, and finally, globally responsible careers. There will be lots of links to resources, teaching packs, information, um, that, schools and educators can download. There will be activities, so there'll be webinars, live webinars based on issues like plastics, food, um, energy, and we will run a careers assembly that 
um, schools can dial into if they wish. And we'll also be launching a competition called Get It Right, which asks students to write a book, actually write a story rather than a whole book, um, on one of the themes for any of the ages that we cover within school. So what I would ask you to do is if you could share this with your family, friends, colleagues, anyone involved in education, anyone who's got children, um, and look out for the social media promotion. Um, we are really going to promote this week of activities and hope to get lots of schools and individuals signed up for our activities in March next year. Um, the second project that we are about to launch any day now is called Globally Responsible Careers in STEM. Um, and it's, it was developed because we recognise that um, SGR has had a lot of resources around um, ethical careers on the website for quite some time. And we wanted to refresh that and put some new material out there. So we're currently developing a website which has the following content. There's a self-assessment section where students can look at themselves, hold the mirror up to themselves and say, you know, what am I like? What's the work I want to do? Um, and what sort of employer do I want to work for? And also look at what the issues are, the globally responsible issues around STEM. And that's based on the 17 sustainable development goals. And related to those um, are a number of STEM career paths that students could follow. We're also looking for case studies, inspirational examples. I've had a few um, offers of inspirational case studies, but if you know of anyone who you think is a particularly good example of a globally responsible career in STEM, please do contact me at SGR. And there, are, there will be resources, for example, an assembly pack for schools to download, teaching packs, posters, those sorts of things. And all of the other resources will be available to download as PDFs for careers advisors as well. So that's what we've done and what we will be doing. I'll now hand over to Emily. Jan, you don't quite escape yet because there's um, we've got a couple of questions have come in um, for you and I'll put them both